Good day, everyone, and welcome to my short talk for the UKZN eLearning Symposium 2022, entitled The Spectre of Plagiarism in eLearning, a Chemical Engineering Case Study. My name is David Lockhart, and I'm the academic leader for the discipline of chemical engineering. And today I'm going to be talking about our experiences with plagiarism inclusion in online assessments over the past two and a half years, some of the remedial measures that have been taken to address these challenges and how we may move forward with this issue. Now, it is true that on the online platform has served as a valuable mechanism for learning at all levels within programs at the university. Indeed, it has been used successfully to cover almost entire curricula over the past five semesters to promote teaching and learning. I'm also encouraged by the fact that student engagement has been facilitated through various ways not merely through the lecture tutorial to the examination. And I would like to thank Prof. Craig Burt and others for their work specifically in this area. What has remained a challenge is the pollution and plagiarism in online assessments. As the student network has grown during these past years, so have these issues, especially at the beginning of the remote teaching period with tests and other conventional assessments merely translated into an online platform, but this left them particularly open to these types of infringement. But the purpose of this brief study was firstly to probe the various levers for collusion and cheating within these academic settings and to try to obtain some better understanding of the problem. Secondly, to interrogate the measures that have been taken to address these levers over the last couple of years with case studies drawn from the chemical engineering discipline. So very much an experiential account. Now, to do this, we looked at major cases of plagiarism and collusion across the four levels of the program and the five semesters between 2020 and 2022. We thereafter aggregated them according to the type of infringement and mechanisms used, the remedial steps that were taken, and their effectiveness in combating the problem. As expected, the most prevalent cases were in online tests, although at the final year level, cases were also reported on project reports. The two main mechanisms for plagiarism and collusion were A, through the unsanctioned use of online resources, which is a significant problem given the unprompted nature of these assessments. Students delving into online repositories and file sharing sites with the hope of transcribing an answer. And B, through the sharing of test scripts in a common venue. So, for example, undertaking an online test collectively within a LAN or even within individual student homes. Figure one shows the summary of plagiarism and pollution cases within chemical engineering for 2020. We report the major cases as a percentage of the class enrollment, together with a percentage of students copying from an online source or colluding with one another. It is interesting to note that the majority of cases for the first and second year level were due to students copying from online resources, many claiming that they did not even understand why this was wrong. Students at the third and fourth year level were almost exclusively guilty of collusion and sharing of answers, although, although albeit at lower numbers compared to the total class involvement. The situation was more or less mirrored in 2021. The total infringement then dropped, with most students at the first year level were once again using unsanctioned online resources during tests. Overall, the analysis of the data over the four semesters in 2020 and 2021 showed that some form of supervision or oversight was necessary in order to ensure quality control, and that lower level students lack a complete appreciation of the concept of plagiarism inclusion. Mm -hmm. 
The results in the first semester of 2022 were more encouraging, with the only reported infringements being the copying of online resources in project reports at the FOTIA level, and a very small proportion of the students as well. So what really has been done to combat the problem? Now, an interesting use of staggered assessment for blocks of students and variable questions for students within a block. Still assessing the same material, but in different ways. Most assuredly, a time-consuming method for the lecturer and required good moderation to ensure that all tests were at the same level and standard. The use of large question banks, the students receiving a mostly unique draw of questions. Here, the control over the assessment time was particularly important to make sure that they to limit uh, collusion. An especially useful tool at the final year level has been open ended assignments with divergent solutions, so called scenario assessment which demand a unique viewpoint on student output. Ultimately, students are free to converse over the problem, but have to demonstrate their own understanding. Rather than locking out online resources and collaboration, it is enriched by it. Finally, educating on the concepts of plagiarism and collusion, for which, we have dedicated sections of the first year technical communication module. I must also thank the UTLO for putting together a wonderful Moodle based plagiarism masterclass, which is useful for all levels. In closing, I'd like to say that although remedial measures have improved the situation, collusion and plagiarism in online assessments remains a major challenge. Proctoring software may further limit the unsanctioned use of online resources during assessments, but does not completely solve the problem. Thus, the future of assessments and e-learning may rest in the combined use of open-ended assignments and monitored tests to holistically gauge the competencies of student cohort, both and very importantly, maintaining quality control. Thank you.